Welcome to the most listened to golf in the world, the Fairways of Life show, on air, online, and around the world, with the most candid interviews, unforgettable stories, taking you beyond the ropes. Here's your host, New York Times best-selling author, Matt Adams. What's going on, folks? Welcome into the Fairways of Life show from wherever you are joining us on this Wednesday. So absolutely delighted about the shows over the next couple of days. In just a few seconds from now, we're going to be joined by Davis Love the third major champion, such as he is a member of the World Golf Hall of Fame and a multiple time Captain America for Team USA. And Team USA, I'm using that term specifically because Davis one time described to me that it's no longer President's Cup team captain and no longer Ryder Cup team captain necessarily, although those, those two positions obviously are still distinct. He means it in terms of the philosophy of these teams are not separate. They're under one umbrella of Team USA. So we'll talk to him about that coming up. And in particular, because it's a President's Cup year, I want to talk to him about the prospects of Team USA and where the President's Cup sits and more. And then on tomorrow's show, a friend of Davis Love the Third will be joining us, another World Golf Hall of Fame member, absolute legend in his own right. Tom Watson will be a guest on the Fairways of Life show. As to Davis Love the Third, consider this, 33. 33 is the number of golfers who have lived on this earth with 21 or more PGA Tour victories and one or more major championships. Davis Love the Third is one of those players. 33 ever. He's had 179 career top 10 finishes, which is a 23% top 10 rate. His first pro start was in 1986. That's almost 30 years of top 10s every fourth event. That is called sustained excellence. From 1995 to 2000, he played in 30 majors and finished in the top 10 in 13 of them, including the PGA Championship victory in 1997 and three runner-up finishes to boot. He is one of only seven players to have won more than one player's championship. The numbers, as you can see there, are staggering. World Golf Hall of Fame member in 17, Payne Stewart Award winner in 2008, those 21 PGA Tour wins. That championship, the major at the PGA Championship in 97. Six times on the United States Ryder Cup team. Two times as United States Ryder Cup captain. Six times United States President's Cup player. He was the 22 United States President's Cup captain. 790 PGA Tour starts, 108 top five finishes. All of it is absolutely remarkable. Pleasure to welcome Davis Love the Third to the show. Davis, I guess the place to start, this is usually where we start our conversations, where I ask you, what hurts today? That is an excellent question. You got, you got right to the point. Uh, that's why I haven't been playing very well lately, or I'm withdrawing on Saturdays um, at Champions Tour events. Is My body's not great, having some thumb issues. So um, I'm going to have to learn to uh, to draw golf course greens left-handed for the next few months, I think. Um, give, my, give my hands a little bit of a break. And how is that going with the, the golf course architecture with you and your brother Mark as well? I remember during the times when for golf architecture, for the golf industry, there was some lean years. There wasn't a lot of business. Now it seems like everything is booming. Is it the same on the architecture side? Yeah, it's booming on the architecture side, on the golf course construction side. You know, all the builders are busy. Um, as you know, there's no tee times at most clubs. Uh, everybody's out playing golf. The, the clubs are making money now for the first time in a long time. They're doing deferred maintenance uh, like, like you would on your house. When you get a little bit of money, you go ahead and paint the outside. And I think um, we're just really blessed to be in a time where it's busy. I remember a time when Bo Welling and Gil Hans and I were banding up together trying to get a job and um now it's the completely the opposite we're, we're as busy as we've ever been when you guys go to the marketplace because obviously you're going to be up against some of those names you just mentioned and many many more to get a job what is the message for you what is the message when davis love the third comes in as a prospect to design or or redesign be it your golf course well i think the the message we've been given is that you know, we're, we're like Gil Hans or Bo Welling. We really do build the golf courses. Um, like Ben Crenshaw, um, Scott Sherman, our architects up at Cuscawilla right now doing some work for, for Bill and Ben. And, and they're actually 
going to be there and work on the golf course. And I think that's the hardest thing for, you know, I think for a, a club or, or a membership to understand is that, that actually, yeah, Davis Love and Mark Love are going to show up and they're going to build your golf course. They're not just going to draw some, some plans and turn them in and let somebody else build them. And, you know, now we're getting some success. We're getting some, you know, best ofs and some, some great reviews and, um, you know, the ball's rolling for us, but um, it is for a lot of guys, you know, all the guys we mentioned, you know, Doak and Andrew Green and all those guys are, are doing uh, now Jeff Ogilvy are doing incredible work because we're getting a chance. You know, there's a lot of golf courses be either being renovated or built right now. Does it surprise those same people you call them members or, or maybe it's the board that hire you, whoever it is. Does it surprise them when they see you climb into a backhoe? <laughs> Well, it scares them. <laughs> I don't think their insurance covers uh, me on a bulldozer sometimes. But um, the, I, and I've told you this before. One, the the best advice any golf course architect, you know, Fazio, Reese Jones, um, have been very generous to me in their time over the years building golf courses, letting me watch. But Pete Dye said, "You're not a golf course architect until you get on the equipment and you learn how to do it yourself." And that was great advice to learn that most of golf course construction is under the ground and you have to know how things work before you can actually um, tell people what you want to see in a, in a, a tee or a green or a fairway or a bunker. So um, yeah, that's my, as you know, that's my favorite part about it is, is heavy equipment. It, it's interesting to me, Davis, because you included all of my buddies that are either golf course architects or have got, or have gotten into golf course architecture. They never really let, the golf course that they've designed go. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like one of their kids where they're very interested in it. They want to know who the superintendent is. They, they when they're in, in town, it's either planned or, or a surprise visit to check on it. Are you very much still that way? Is it still a passion of yours that if you've designed it or you have redesigned it or renovated it, you're going to stop by when you get a chance because you want to know? Oh, a hundred percent. And now that obviously, I'm about to turn 60 years old. I have more time to do that. When we started this business, I was running full steam on the tour, had a bunch of little kids, um, you know, things going on in my life. And it was hard for me to get to a site. But Wednesday after the Players Championship, I was at TPC Sawgrass checking out what was going on. Uh, I'm going to Hilton Head today to, to study a golf course. Obviously, I love Harbor Town. It's a Pete Dye classic. I can take the time to go just look at golf courses or pop into clubs that we've we're either working on or have worked on and tweak it. You know, we don't want to mess with um, de our design, you know, plantation at Sea Island. Sure, we could tweak a couple of things, but the members love it. The tour players, you know, don't tear it completely apart. Um, we don't really want to mess with our former courses that much, but it's nice to yeah, touch in. Go see the green superintendent, talk to the club pro, you know, make sure everything's going well. So I'm really blessed to have the time to do that now. And I am going to talk to you about the RSM Classic in just a little bit here. I'm looking forward to getting into your mindset and how you think the tournament has settled into the new schedule, et cetera. Uh, but I'm interested with the family stuff too. How old are the grandkids now, if I may? Oh, we have nine, six, and almost five um, little girls. Um, they're a ton of fun. So when I am home, uh, that's my main focus. I was watching horses go around in circles yesterday afternoon <laughs> with my oldest granddaughter. And um, they were over for dinner the other night and hanging out. And it, there's nothing, but I was always told, just wait till you have grandkids. They're the best thing ever. And I was like, it can't be that much better than kids, but uh, I, I'm finding that it is. And what have the grandkids decided to call you their grandfather? What name have you been bestowed? Well, um, my wife, Robin, bestowed on me before um, Eloise, the oldest, was born that I was going to be Poppy and that she was going to be Lovey. And I said, well, I kind of like it when the kid. <laughs> but, um, but then I heard Jenna Bush on TV say, oh, well, Poppy said this. And Poppy said that. And I went, OK, that's fine. <laughs> it's good enough for President Bush. I'll be Poppy. And then There's nothing, yeah. the first granddaughter called Lovey, Lovey. And then the second granddaughter couldn't say it, so she said "yay yay." So two of them call her call her "yay yay," and one of them calls her "lovey." So uh, I, I, it worked out the way I wanted it to for her, but not for me. But uh, I'm I'm happy to be Poppy, and um, now now some of the young pros around here are calling me Poppy too, which I, I don't really like. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, can you believe, Davis, that tomorrow 
is exactly four years since your devastating house fire. Uh, I remember touching base with you, I think it was a day or two later, just to make sure you were okay, and you still couldn't speak at that time because I, I assume of the smoke inhalation. Uh, when you look back on that now, how much of an emotional scar do you still have from it, your family? And I guess the other question now, since we're a few years past, how close was it to being a very, very tragic event? Um, well, it's funny you bring that up. A couple of nights ago, that came up at dinner, and um, my wife, Robin, said, is today the day? And my, my daughter said, no, not yet. And I said, you know, it's just a day. Let's don't memorialize that day. But yeah, it's hard to believe it's been four years. Um, yes, it was very close. You know, it was during COVID. Um, granddaughters were spending the night every night hanging out at the house. We had all kinds of stuff going on um, on our property to entertain them and us since it was COVID shut down. And um, that night, we just decided that they shouldn't spend the night. And um, if they had, it would it probably could have turned very tragic. We had girls spread out all over the house because Robin and I um, barely got out in time. So we, we always count our blessings around our house and we're blessed. It was just stuff. We, we got out um, safe. We're in the process of rebuilding right now. The, the, the granddaughters were climbing around in the new house yesterday afternoon, checking it out. So um, we're all moving forward and, and, and happy to be here to talk about it. Our guest is World Golf Hall of Fame member Davis Love III. When we come back from this break, I want to talk to Davis about when he came out on tour. Remember, it was more than a decade before Tiger Woods came out on tour. How much that changed? Because remember, he won his major championship in 1997. That was right at the start of Tiger Woods' run on the PGA Tour. So he's seen both sides. He was on both sides of that particular era and the others that were before him. Uh, we're speaking about the likes of Tom Watson and Jack Nicklaus. He was also friends with, Ar with Arnold Palmer. So we have a lot of ground to cover still with Davis Love III, and we will do that as the Fairways of Life show continues right after these words, which the show is presented by the PGA Tour Superstore, the number one golf retailer from coast to coast. You need it, you want it, wear it, swing it, learn from it. You can find it at the PGA Tour Superstore, your happy place. Relax. Easy now. Find your happy place. It's all in the hips. Just tap it in. Yes! Find the latest clubs and apparel at Golf's Happy Place, the PGA Tour Superstore. In Ireland, golf is more than just a game. Come and experience our world-famous Lynx courses and our world-famous Parkland courses, all set alongside world-famous scenery. And visit our world-famous historic sites. And while you're here, enjoy our world-famous hospitality. Fill your heart with Ireland at ireland.com forward slash golf. It screams. It tracks. It's soft. It reacts. It is the Bridgestone Tour B with a game-changing reactive cover. Designed to spring faster off your driver and stick longer to your wedges. Try Bridgestone's Tour Bs, the Tour Ball reinvented. The Gen 6 Iron is a culmination of everything that we have learned as a team, the absolute best golf club I have ever hit. It's something special. Say hello to the new PXG Gen 6 Iron. The longest, most accurate irons we've ever made. They go higher and farther than any iron that I have hit to date, and they're so easy to hit. Super excited for the consumer to try this. They're gonna love them. PXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Baseball? Nah. Football? Done it. I think I'm gonna go to the PGA Tour. Bo, you gonna need the right equipment company. I think I got that. You know Tour Edge backs all their clubs with a lifetime warranty. I know. They ship all their premium custom clubs in 48 hours. I know. All their premium clubs are hand built in the USA. I know. You know Tour Edge has won 35 times out here. Guys, I know. Pound for pound, nothing comes close. 
Boyne Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern lower peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boyne Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to boynegolf.com. LoveGolfDesigns.net. LoveGolfDesigns.net is Davis and Mark's website if you want to check out what they're doing uh, on golf courses and projects that they have uh, working from coast to coast and around the world. So, Davis, when, when you came out on tour a decade before Tiger Woods and you think about that time period and then he emerges, you absolutely had a bridge across two really distinct errors. One that started with Jack Nicklaus very much still being a part of the story and one that arguably ended with Tiger Woods battling Jack in, in the hearts and minds of many of which one was the greatest player of all time. That's an incredible era in which to have competed. What are your thoughts in terms of when you were benefited from uh, actually playing the game and, and being able to be around all these legends becoming one yourself? Well, I, I've had an incredible um, history of being around the game. You know, like you said, my dad took me to major championships when I was a little kid, and I met Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus and watched them play, like, PGA at Tanglewood in North Carolina. Um, watched them play, you know, Jack Nicklaus, watched Jack Nicklaus win the first Players' Championship at Atlanta Country Club in my backyard where my dad was a head pro, all the way to, to playing against Tiger Woods. You know, it's pretty incredible run. Um, you know, I didn't get to play a whole lot with – the current guys like Scotty Scheffler and all of them, but um, I know them and I've been around them and watched them play. So it's, it's amazing what I've seen. Um, I saw Jack Nicklaus as a rookie on the PGA tour win the masters, you know, in 1986 and then um, played up against Tiger Woods when he won his first one in, in 97. And it's incredible the, where the game has gone. Um, you know, I, I was, I was lucky to not have to play against Tiger my whole career. Uh, I always say, if you give me all my seconds, which is, I think, around 30, I still can't catch Tiger Woods and wins. So uh, it's pretty incredible what he's done and how he changed the game. Um, but now I have just as much fun watching these, these young guys now like Tiger does. They're, they're incredible. How much, when you, you reference how much he changed the game, as someone that was there before, during, and after, how much did Tiger Woods change the game from a pro's perspective? Well, I remember, you know, I was working with Butch Harmon for a while and I remember in L.A. one time when Tiger was playing as an amateur, I said, hey, how's the kid doing? And he goes, oh, he can't hit a wedge the right distance. He goes, but when he figures out how to hit his wedges the right distance, you guys won't be able to beat him. And I said, come on, Butch. He's not that good. And Butch like, oh, yeah, he's that good. So, of course, Tiger figured out how to control the distance on his short irons eventually, and, and we couldn't beat him. Um, but like Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus, Tiger brought a whole new generation of fans, of players, of now tour players to the game. And, you know, you can argue Tiger, Jack, Arnie, all you want, but those three guys made golf popular and fun and exciting and cool. Uh, you know, Fred Couples added a lot of cool in there too, but you can't put it past Tiger because he, with the modern technology of golf broadcasts, he, he made golf what it is today. And, um, you know, hopefully we get to see a lot more of him. I love watching him and Charlie and the father son, but I'd sure like to watch him uh, in Augusta this April. When he first came out, the I'm just here to win and, you know, maybe I didn't win with my A game or what have you. Were you amongst the, the tour pros that were annoyed with that young Tiger Woods that he hadn't really earned his stripes yet? Um, I, I, was anno I was annoyed at how, how bad he was beating me, but um. As a friend, no, we, we tried to give him a little bit of advice and he took a little bit of it. And as he got older, he took more and more. And now, obviously, he's um, he's a, a, a close friend. And as you were talking about Team USA Golf, a big part of Team USA Golf. And obviously, he's a big part of the, the leadership of the PGA Tour right now. So 
Um, we all have to grow into our role, Matt. You know, when I came out on tour, um, I was just a rookie, just learning my way around and, and didn't know who the, the reporters were, or the TV announcers were. I didn't know who the sponsors were. Um, flip it around. Now I'm the veteran telling the young guys how to do that, how to, how to get by on the tour. So um, he learned he learned his way around the golf course and then he learned his way around being a golf ambassador, which he is now. When we're talking about, because you mentioned the Ryder Cup and Tiger Woods, the speculation continues to swirl that he'll likely be the, the next Ryder Cup captain at Beth Page for Team USA. Can you see that uh, coming to fruition? You know, I don't know. And, and knowing what um, Tiger's told me and what he said publicly, you know, he's busy right now. And the Ryder Cup takes a lot of time and effort. There's, there's other Ryder Cups coming up that, that suit him just as well. So his time, I, I know, will come. But, um, you know, look at what's been announced over the last 12 months. You know, Tiger's on the board. Tiger's going to be involved in the, the, um, the, the new co um, on that board now. Um, th there's a lot going on. The TGL League. So, um, you know, like Rory, those guys have a lot going on. And it's hard to ask them to do more. A PGA Tour Enterprises was one of the things that you were mentioning. Uh, when, when you see that investment of initial $1.5 billion in the PGA Tour, upwards potentially to $3 billion, you mentioned that Tiger is amongst the players that are directly involved, but it certainly seems like all of you members of the PGA Tour are vested in what's happening now, uh, much more so uh, perhaps than even six or eight months ago. Uh, we know that negotiations are continuing with the Public Investment Fund, what are your thoughts in terms of where golf is right now? Are we at a better place now than we were, say, a year or two years ago? I think on the golf course, we certainly are. I mean, you look at um, the Players' Championship um, and then at Bay Hill, you know, the cream's rising to the top. The great players are playing well. It's exciting, fun to watch. Um, I think the game on the course is, is great. The, the game in the boardroom has is, is obviously been fractured for a couple of years. Um, Jay Monahan is trying to navigate that and the player directors are trying to navigate that. Uh, I like the way they're going. I've, I've been a little bit involved uh, on the sidelines um, of watching everything that's happened. Um, but, you know, generally we, we have to move on. I think that's the biggest takeaway I've gotten from it the last few months is it, the player directors. You know, look at Peter Malnati. Once things kind of got settled and done with the NUCO, he started playing good. Um, you know, you can see the relief, not only to win from Peter, but the relief of, gosh, I've been through a lot the last couple of years. This is an incredible win. So I think we need to move on uh, and hopefully uh, that's coming soon. Uh, I want to talk to you too about Team USA. You heard me mention it when you were first coming on the show this morning. And that is the way, the concept that you have now that there's not a Ryder Cup team and there's not a President's Cup team. Obviously there are and they're distinct but you're, you're both under the same umbrella of Team USA. Could you talk us through that philosophy? Well, I think that that philosophy is not the, from the player's side um, as much as it is from the captain's side, that, that we're working as a group, you know, including, including Tiger Woods, even though you haven't seen him at the last few events, he's been very involved, but Jim Furyk and Steve Stricker and Davis Love, we're all working together you know, hopefully you don't see me at any more President's Cups or Ryder Cups driving a golf cart around, but I will still be willing to help the team. And whether it's the PGA of America or the PGA Tour, there's a lot of people that make these events happen. And if we just decide in June, we're going to start thinking about the President's Cup in Royal Montreal, we're going to be behind the eight ball. So Jim Furyk has been thinking about this for a year and a half and working on it. We've been supporting him and it's just a constant thing. We learned that from Team USA Basketball that, that yeah, we're going to have the Olympics every four years, but we need to be working on this, setting up our structure, um, being prepared. So not only the travel, but the organization and the practice and the, the uniform, all that has to get done way ahead of time. So uh, we love doing it. And, and um, you know, hope, as I said, hopefully my role of traveling with the team <laughs> should be over, but I, I'm willing to help out in any way going forward. You know, you see the young guys, Zach Johnson, Stuart Sink, all those guys getting involved. 
Yesterday, we had Frank Nabilo on the Fairways of Life show with us. He, of course, multiple times part of the International President's Cup team. Uh, Davis, give a listen to this. This is what Frank's assessment was of where the President's Cup is right now. The hardest thing for the international side is trying to get some sort of commonality. But it was very important to validate those region, regions. So whether you were Jumbo Ozaki, for example, who was on our team early on, or a young Rio Ishikawa, it was very important for them to um, represent their region. Obviously, for me, from New Zealand, it was huge for New Zealand, for young New Zealand players to come through. Australia has always been very, very strong, as is South Africa and golf. So it was more about the knock-on effect of how it would benefit the game in those era, era, areas. But you're right, the, the, the winning tally is actually, well, be brutally honest, is extremely poor. There have been very spirited challenges, certainly from the international point of view, but um, the results just haven't sort of stood out where it's going to make people watch and say, I've got to go to the President's Cup because it's, you know, it's like the Ryder Cup. It's not yet, not even close. So, Davis, what's your reaction to what you heard right there? Is this a case of continuing to let it grow and flourish into something more? Or is the President's Cup potentially in danger because people look at it like uh, the early days of the Ryder Cup post-World War II and they go, eh, it's not competitive? Well, um, we've been very fortunate to come out on top most every time. A couple of long, long road trips. We did not play well. But... Um, you know, I think we've just been very lucky. It's it's like a run in sports that, that we're on. Uh, and obviously, like most runs in sports, eventually it, it will have to end. But from a fan perspective and from a sponsor perspective and a growth perspective, the President's Cup gets bigger and bigger every year. It was out of control at Charlotte. Um, it's it's going very, very well uh, as far as sales and as far as, uh, as fan support. So. Um, I agree with Frank. Yeah, the rest of the world is catching up like Great Britain, Ireland, and Europe did. But unfortunately, like the great Jackie Burke told us one time, who do, who do we think we are taking on one half the world one year and the other half the world the next year? Eventually, it's going to get to the point where it's so competitive that we might be on the other end of it. Think about all those countries Frank just mentioned. When there's two or three or four players vying for the team from all those places around the world. All of a sudden, it gets hard. You know, it's hard for us to beat Europe now because they are a really, really good team. I think the internationals are just going to get better and better. Do you, speaking of Europe, in retrospect, when you have a loss like we had uh, in Italy, do you come back and look at that and go, there's something that we can learn from what took place? Was there something you learned in Italy? Well, there was a lot that happened over there. Like, um, a lot of things happened over in Paris that you just, as a team or as, as a captain, you can't prepare for. You know, we, we had a big break between the Tour Championship and the Ryder Cup last year. Um, a lot of guys really, not only did they not play, they didn't really have a place to play that was competitive. Um, and then we had guys get sick, you know, that you don't want to make excuses, but we did have guys get sick. And we went over and practiced on the golf course. We knew the golf course. We just didn't play it as well as them. Um, and it's still, people have to understand, it's home field advantage. <laughs> I watched Carolina basketball. They played in Charlotte the other night. That was, that was a home court advantage, no matter how you look at it. And, you know, now they're going to be where in L.A. or somewhere. It's not going to be a home court advantage. So we have to continue to do a good job to get the team prepared to play. Um, but, you know, we went into this in 2014, 2015, saying, hey, we're not going to win 10 of these next cups in a row. We have to try to win as many as possible. And we're doing a pretty good job. You know, our win percentage is, is awfully well when you count in the, the President's Cup. We just have to somehow get over that mental hump of winning a Ryder Cup and an away game. And hopefully that's at a dare manner. The other day, when you and I were texting back and forth and, and you were telling me you were going to be able to come on the show on Tuesday. And I was excited and telling you, that's awesome. Tom Watson's coming on on Wednesday. You hit me back with a text about your, your clothing sponsor, which I want to ask you about your sponsors now. And you said 60 years together. You, you want to share with the world what you sent? Well, yeah, last year, Tom and I celebrated uh, being um, ambassadors with, with Ralph Lauren for 30 years. Um, we had a great um, party dinner 
um, in, in the city um, at, the, at the polo bar. It was a lot of fun. And it's hard to believe all those numbers that you put up um, are old guy, old guy numbers and old guy records. Um, it's, it's hard to believe that, that we've been at it this long. Um, it's amazing for me. That's a 30 year relationship for me with Tom Watson. Um, he was my first Ryder Cup captain in 1993. Uh, I've been hanging out around him for a long, long time. You know, if you and he and I sat down, we'd be talking about horses. We'd be talking about go-karts. We'd be talking about farm tractors. Um, he's, be he's become a great uh, a friend off the golf course rather than a guy that I came out on tour trying to play against and trying to beat. It's awesome. It, it's absolutely awesome. You want to tell us about some of the other people and companies that you're associated with? Who are your sponsors? <laughs> well, I, I couldn't figure out how to get my workday hat to work with it, it, inside on TV, but um, the workday company has been a great, great partner of mine for a long, long time. And obviously um, there's so many of them. Titleist takes great care of me to this day. Um, so I've been blessed to have, have great sponsors around me. Obviously, RSM, you mentioned the RSM Classic. Um, 15 year partner with our tournament at Sea Island um, and Sea Island. Um, Mr. Jones Jr. gave me five or six shirts and a, and a golf bag that said Sea Island and sent me to Q school. So <laughs> that's my longest relationship. Uh, they haven't run me off the island yet. I'm still hanging out with my good friend Bill Jones, the third all the time. And um, I've been really blessed with good people around me. It's not really that they're sponsors. It's just good people. And um, that's what I'm striving for with the PGA Tour right now is I have a partnership and a friendship with a company that sponsors on the PGA Tour and their main objective is to give money to charity. And um, yeah. so I think the, the short answer to the, to the PGA Tour is just don't lose our vision that we're all about giving money to charity and creating playing opportunities for players and uh, the tour will continue to, to, to survive and, and do well. And um, I'm, just, I'm just blessed to be a part of it. Very, very wise counsel there as well. When we come back with Davis Love III, I want to get into the RSM Classic. Talk more about what it's like to have the role as the host of a PGA Tour event and one that is distinctive for multiple reasons, not the least of which of what they do for charities. And it's not just charities in the Golden Isles area, Sea Island. I'm talking about across the country with what they have been able to accomplish. It is an incredibly unique event. Two golf courses, it's a big field. There's a lot of merits to it that we're going to get to know a little bit better right after these words. Relax. Easy now. Find your happy place. It's all in the hips. Just tap it in. Yes! Find the latest clubs and apparel at Golf's Happy Place, the PGA Tour Superstore. In Ireland, golf is more than just a game. Come and experience our world-famous Lynx courses and our world-famous Parkland courses, all set alongside world-famous scenery. And visit our world-famous historic sites. And while you're here, enjoy our world-famous hospitality. Fill your heart with Ireland at ireland.com forward slash golf. It screams. It tracks. It's soft. It reacts. It is the Bridgestone Tour B with a game-changing reactive cover designed to spring faster off your driver and stick longer to your wedges. Try Bridgestone's Tour Bs. The Tour Ball reinvented. The Gen 6 Iron is a culmination of everything that we have learned as a team. The absolute best golf club I've ever hit. It's something special. Say hello to the new PXG Gen 6 Iron. The longest, most accurate irons we've ever made. They go higher and farther than any iron that I have hit to date, and they're so easy to hit. Super excited for the consumer to try this. They're going to love them. PXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Baseball? Nah. Football? Done it. I think I'm going to go after the PGA Tour. Bo, you're going to need the right equipment company. I think I got that. You know Tour Edge backs all their clubs with a lifetime warranty. I know. They ship all their premium custom clubs in 48 hours. I know. All their premium clubs are hand-built in the USA. I know. You know Tour Edge has won 35 times out here. Guys, I know. 
Pound for pound, nothing comes close. Boeing Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern lower peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boeing Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boeing Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to boeinggolf.com. Zero Friction introduces the Wheel Pro Push Cart Golf Bag with its revolutionary three in one design, supportive legs that spring into action, a comfort grip handle with three locking positions, accessories for the modern golfer enhanced by seven pockets for more storage, and removable all terrain wheels which slide right into place. The new Zero Friction Wheel Pro Golf Bag checks every box for every golfer. Push, carry, or cart. The decision is yours thanks to Zero Friction. Head to zerofriction.com today. Welcome back to the Fairways of Life show. Matt Adams here with you. My guest is Davis Love III, member of the World Golf Hall of Fame. And uh, Davis, it's, it's an interesting contrast because in your advice to the PGA Tour of kind of remember where you came from, the conversations right now are more and more swirling around creating events, and they have, that are for the golf elite, the, the, the best of the best, of which that would have been you during your playing days. And yet you are the host of the RSM Classic, which couldn't be more of a journeyman tournament, right? A place out there for players to grind it out. You get some great players in the field in terms of their stature, but the field is so big, especially for that time of year over multiple courses, that you're able to bring in a lot of young players that the world may not even know yet that we get to see emerge. How about that balance? How did it come about? Well, we started off um, kind of a small field because we played one golf course. Uh, we had short daylight. Um, we were we were trying to get guys in that needed starts, you know, with our exemptions, and we were we were doing well, but we weren't creating a whole lot of playing opportunities at that time of year. And I was sitting in a board meeting, and Charlie Hoffman brought up another tournament on the PGA Tour that had two golf courses and could play more players in the fall. And I'm like, wait a minute, that that's me too. <laughs> so I came back to uh, you know our team and said, wait a minute, why don't we just play two golf courses? We can play a full field and get 150 plus guys in, more playing opportunities. Selfishly, it's more pro, pro-am for us and they're, therefore more money to charity. So um, again, as we say on the PGA Tour, most good ideas that happen on the PGA Tour um, through the board come from the players. And that was a great idea that Charlie had. And um, it's really helped our tournament. Um, we've given over $45 million to charity in 15 years and this probably the smallest amazing. market on the PGA Tour. So it's, it's really amazing. But the whole goal was to get more players to be able to play a fall event, have, have more of the young guys have a chance, the guys that need to keep their card, et cetera a chance to play and that's what the tour is all about so we're we're driving both ends of the spectrum you know getting guys an opportunity to play and and more money to charity do you, do you shake your head now when you look back on it and say you know when i got my foundation involved we hope to make a positive impact expected to make a positive impact but that, now you can look back even to this point and it's going to be more this year you're already over 45 million dollars it, it's amazing you know the tour told us Hey, you're you're gonna have a tough time getting going. You're gonna lose money the first year, make a little money the second year, and we've exceeded those expectations from day one. But again, it's about a partnership. RSM came in, obviously, to entertain their clients and to get their name out there. But now they flipped it, and now they just want to give more money to charity. They see the impact that they're making. Our tournament has a great impact for the Golden Isles and for our area. Um, millions of dollars to charity, lots of economic impact. But what the tournament does through our Birdies for Love program that RSM manages and runs gives millions and millions of dollars every year to charities all around the, the country and all around the world. Through their offices, they have their team of people that raise money. They're you know, huge checks every year <laughs> are produced that don't come to 
the Golden Isles, they go to all over the country to charities that are supported. We learned that from the John Deere Classic, who does a great job with their birdies program. And um, RSM has taken it and run with it. So when we say this year in November, when we throw this big six or seven million dollar number, the majority of that is is because our partnership with RSM and they've taken the PGA Tour model and run with it. Yeah, and, and when you talk about the RSM Classic in particular, it's one of my favorite events of the year too, that it has such a, a unique vibe to it because it's the week before Thanksgiving. Uh, it just, every, everything about it, the way it's embraced by the Golden Isles and everybody at Sea Island, the, the mentality of the leadership of, of the RSM Classic. Yes, as you mentioned, they're there with, with their clients and they're definitely there to entertain, but at the same time, they know that they're making an impact back in their local communities. They know that they are changing and impacting lives. Uh, they have a, a you know, charity putting contest where they bring in the Boys and Girls Clubs and the Special Olympians and they match them up with PGA Tour players like Davis Love III and, and others. And it's just, there's, there's one thing after another that makes this event so special. And I'm not gonna say it's luck, Davis, because I don't believe it is luck. I believe all of you have worked so very, very hard to make it happen. But what you have churning right now is is really quite incredible and very impressive. Yeah, it's it's an amazing. Like I said, it's a partnership now. You know, our um, our team here in the foundation, and then the Sea Island team and the RSM team. We're just looking for ways to impact people through charity now. And the, the putting contest, which you're a great host of every year, the, the, the MC and the lead commentator. CEOs and business people, RSM leadership and our other sponsors, the first thing they talk about is they want to make sure that they're in early in the pro-am so they can do the putting contest in the afternoon. And it raises, um, you know, $100,000 for charity maybe. But the impact of bringing those kids out and watching them putt and the whole community talking about the putting contest or the wiffle ball tournament, whatever it is, um, wiffle ball game with Adam Wainwright, our our famous pitcher, <laughs> be, being the. It looks like we lost Davis and and his feed right as he was telling us about the the merits of uh, the RSM Classic, and the Buick Classic, and it was relaxed and fun in a small community. And the players and the families loved it. And that's what they love about coming to Sea Island. You know, the old days of the heritage, um, you know, a week off kind of after the Masters for everybody to go to the beach. Um, that's the vibe we wanted here at Sea Island. And um, certainly because of the resort and because of our sponsors, we pulled it off. No doubt about that. How about your placement in what is now called the FedEx Fall? Where Are you pleased with the position of where the tournament is and what it means now? Well, We've changed, you know, the fall tournaments have all changed over the last 15 years. Different roles, different times of the season, we're the beginning of the season, we're the end of the season. Again, all those things we just talked about, as long as RSM feels like they are a part of something that's for charity and growing the game, they're all in. Um, so it really doesn't matter that much to us when or where we are, as long as we can accomplish those goals. And again, back. As long as the PGA Tour, as long as that's their goal, our original mission statement of charity dollars and playing opportunities, that's all RSM wants. They, they want to see guys come here and play. Look at our champions. We've, we've had a lot of great champions here. We haven't had the, the strongest field, but we get a really, really good field, and we get really, really good champions and players that go on to, to bigger and better things. So um, we're excited about where we are. Um, we're just happy to be on the PGA Tour. and. Uh, continuing to give money to charity. It is a credit to you. It is a credit to your brother. It's a credit to your wife. It's a credit to your foundation. It's a credit to RSM. It's a credit to everybody involved in the tournament that it is so unique. And beyond that, uh, Davis, you you are the busiest person I've ever met in my life. You never stop moving. You mentioned that you're close to turning 60 years old. You'd never know it with the way that you keep yourself on the run and more power to you with that. And thank you for what you've meant to the game. And thank you for the way that you continue to give back, myriad of ways that you continue to give back to the sport. It is all recognized. It is all appreciated. Uh, and for today, thank you as ever for your time. It was great to catch up. Thank you. Great to see you. I hope to see you at the Masters. And looking forward to it. All right, folks, we'll be back with more of the Fairways of Life show right after this. 
guess. Hello world, huh? <laughs> and with one subtle hello, Tiger began an amazing and unthinkable career. I've done it for 20 years now with, with Bridgestone. It allows me to play an aggressive style around the greens, and it's allowed me to win a lot of tournaments. Bridgestone Golf, proud to be part of your journey. Boyne Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship-caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern Lower Peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boyne Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to BoyneGolf.com. I think when you're training for other sports or you're what why most people go to the gym is so that they can like have muscles and you know be strong and be healthy and a lot of the reason why they struggle to play golf is their body doesn't move properly for them to be able to hit a golf ball and when you're training for golf it's a little bit different because you're focused more on flexibility and mobility and being uh, strong in motion when you're able to kind of have a warm-up and have a workout routine and kind of gradually build up to where you're training your body to move properly yeah you're gonna get a lot of big dividends on the golf course Easy now, find your happy place. It's all in the hips. Just tap it in. Yes! Find the latest clubs and apparel at Golf's Happy Place, the PGA Tour Superstore. What if we started a company and the company was under no time constraints, no financial constraints? The one constraint is their clubs had to be exceptional performers and much better than any other alternative. I was told time and again, it'll never work. It worked like a house of fire. And I'll tell you what, I think our customers love it. BXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Stride by Zero Friction, the first of its kind personal caddy. Walk in comfort and style with Stride's remote and follow me technology. The Stride handles almost any terrain and its 54 hole range will last all day. The lightweight design and removable front wheels makes it simple to handle. Plus it easily fits golf carts. Order yours and save. Visit zerofriction.com backslash stride or scan the QR code to order yours today. Stride, your personal caddy. Welcome back to the Fairways of Life show on this Tuesday. Really pumped about tomorrow's show too. We went from Frank yesterday in, in DL3 today and tomorrow we have uh, Tom Watson joining us on the show, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, let's bring Dom in here. I want to find out what the question of the day was. And Dom, I have to start by telling you the funny thing is we've been doing this for so long now that if you noticed, here we had Davis Love the Third on his connection went down, right? And instead of going into a complete panic, we let it breathe for a couple beats. And then all of a sudden he reconnects, was still talking, never had any idea. His connection went down and we just let it go. I thought that was absolutely classic. It was, it was good to have him on. And it's, I don't know what you do. I think you lie to the people. I don't know what you tell them how long the interviews will be, but the interviews end up being what? 30, 45 minutes, something like that. But I thought that was classic. Years ago, I mean, like eight or nine years ago, I stopped putting time limits on anything that we did. So when I'd be talking to someone, they would say, well, how long is the interview going to go? I'd be like, I, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. What, whatever number is in your head, it'll, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, the question of the day today, what was uh, which I... Well, which I, of course, put out as soon as you started talking to Davis. And the first thing you talked to Davis about was injuries and made me think. What hurts Everyone today? Everyone out there watching. Yeah, what hurts today? Has golf caused any injuries for you? Do you play, do you play with injuries? Did it, do you play so much it caused injury? And I got to say, we got a lot of injured people here. 52% of the people are saying, golf's messed me up. <laughs> 
I am broken. Really? <laughs> That's half. They think Matt. the injury's from That's golf. More than Matt. half. From golf. That's what they're saying. From golf. I'm kind of surprised by that. Is that, that really I, I that see... surprising? Yeah, but which, by the way, folks, too, I I promise you, I will get to the Nelly Corda sound that I promised yesterday. Didn't have time to get to. I'm gonna. I'm planning on getting to it now. So, Dom, keep me honest with the time, so we have time th- that we need to get to her sound. Um, it is surprising to me. I could see golf accentuating injuries. I remember Paul Azinger said to me one time. He said uh, he was talking about the at the time it was Brooks Kepka getting injured, et cetera, and he said. These guys aren't getting injured on the course. They're getting injured in the gym. Uh, so I could well, see I don't golf think the people watching are getting hurt in the gym. <laughs> pretty sure they're not hitting the weights hard. I'm pretty sure it's getting up at seven, not stretching, and then tearing their back apart. I'm pretty sure that's what's doing it. <laughs> Is that what you hear? Is that what they're writing into people? If you guys log on to the Fairways of Life YouTube channel, there's there, our active discussion board is going there all the time and that and that's also where dom posts the question of the day if you want to weigh in or vote on it i mean honestly uh, is, the question of the day should be do you stretch every day because the answer is 100 percent no is i can tell you what the answer is gonna be <laughs> well you know I, I i get the we're we're associated with golf forever which we love and and they they do a great deal of stretching but it also becomes a lot of strength training with their program, which is why it's amazing. But you have to make sure you budget in the time that you need to do that kind of stretching. Because if it's uh, somebody playing, say, in like, a, you know, a work league, an industrial league or something on a, on a Wednesday afternoon, a lot of times you've got players that are just jumping out of their car and straight to the, to the tee box in order to be there on time. But if you have time to stretch before you play, and if you know it will potentially make you play better, but at least it can help you not get injured, that sounds like a, a better deal. Dom just told me that we've only got seconds to get to Nelly Corda. So she plays in two events, or three events, and she wins two of them. Could this be a big season for Nelly Corda? Here she is reacting to her latest victory. I honestly didn't really start feeling nervous until I made that eagle putt. I was kind of just, I didn't really know what was going on, uh, how the group behind me was doing. And it was so windy that I was just caught up in trying to control my ball flight. And once I made the eagle, I mean, I got maybe a little nervous where I kind of maybe got a little ahead of myself, started making some mistakes. Um, but, yeah, it was interesting last couple of holes. Eagle, uh, eagle, bogey, birdie, bogey, bogey. Real birdie. quick. Um, probably just calming down after making two back-to-back bogeys. Um, you know, I have vented to my coach um, on the putting green, and then he asked me, if I'm ready to be positive, <laughs> it took a little bit, and then I was ready, and then uh, we talked a little bit, had um, laughed a little bit. He's really good at just cracking jokes, which sometimes I just give him <laughs> a pity laugh, but <laughs> he's usually pretty good. Um, and then, yeah, just when I walked to 18, um, Jay and I um, told ourselves that, you know, um, it's still, I can still win, so just keep my head high. Yeah, I'm ready to not play a playoff and just win. <laughs> I was stressing myself out. Um, no, I think, as I said, I mean, with every win, there's always a story of what you're overcoming or what you're kind of going through. And um, I've, I never have the personality of I never back down. So I make sure that I give it my all 110% every single time. So no matter what the circumstances are, if I've messed up or if I've finished Eagle birdie, I mean, when you step on that tee and first playoff hole, it's time to go. It's all fresh and new. And where my game's at compared to what it was at my peak, I can't say because it was so long ago. I mean... That year kind of felt like a blur. Um, Sometimes, you know, golf, you put so much effort into practice and into golf, and it kind of goes sideways. And sometimes golf just kind of feels easy in a sense where everything's kind of flowing. So throughout my career and throughout the rest of my career, I'm going to have those times. I mean, everyone kind of goes through them. Um, but I think it's just managing it and having a team around you that um, know you know you really well and um, that know how to like put your head back into the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think um, I paused at 
um, eight for a pretty long time. I mean, seven, and then um, after 2021, I felt like, you know, I, I kept <laughs> racking them up, I guess, to the wins, and golf was so much fun. And then 2022, I got one at the end of the year, and last year was a little disappointing with no wins. But I think it's just golf. I mean, you got to take it as it comes. Um, you know, everything happens for a reason, and I'm always going to put – uh, 110% into everything that I do, especially with how much I love the game. And I just think it's it's so much fun competing. There's nothing better than that adrenaline rush coming down the your last couple holes and when you're in the lead. So when it comes to wins, obviously every event that I play in, I want to win. But I also just love the experiences of playing in these events and learning more about myself. And to win a tournament with someone's name like Savory Pac attached to it, what does it mean to be the first champion, official champion of the Sa of the Fur Hills Savory Pac Championship? Yeah, this actually this was the first time I got to actually speak with her and interact with her. And growing up, you know, she inspired so many around, and me being one of them. And she's one of the greatest to ever play the game. And to get to meet her and talk to her and win her event um, is an amazing feeling. Nellie Corda, uh, after her victory in her comments to the press that we promised you, uh, while that was playing, some uh, news updates popped up on my devices here, and the news of the Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore is absolutely horrific. Uh, our thoughts are with everyone uh, in any way touched by that. So I know uh, much of that news is still coming together, and I'm sure that you can find uh, much of the story surrounding it on all of the NBC News outlets. So thoughts are there with that. Thank you to Davis Love III for joining us on the program today. Super pumped to have Tom Watson as our guest tomorrow. I hope you guys have a good day. Be safe. Bye for now.